children see everything as new. Everything is mysterious and they're curious. And adults jump to conclusions and we're certain and uh, we already know everything. So to get back to that childlike wonder, we have to focus on the cause of that, which is our comparative mindset. And we compare this moment to the last. We compare this thing to the same thing I saw yesterday. But every moment is different. The light reflects off differently every moment of every object. And the atmosphere is constantly changing. And there is a newness, but we have to get in touch with that subtlety and that curiosity. And we have to really practice being present because it's being present where there is no comparison to the past and where we aren't certain of everything that's going to happen. So many people are either optimists or pessimists, right? And whichever one they are, they're both certain that either something good or something bad is going to happen. <laughs> well, I'm an I don't knowist. <laughs> And because uh, that's, that's the truth that I've found is that we just don't know. And that when we jump to conclusions, when we panic, when we freak out because we think something bad's going to happen, and then we find out oh, nothing, it's not so bad. Or even if it was so bad, we can get through it. We're still have functioning brains, and this moment needed this action, and now this moment needs different action. And we can just be in the moment and responding in a more thoughtful and conscientious way. And we simply practice being present through meditation or through turning every activity into an opportunity to be mindful. And we can do that by occasionally not wearing headphones as we walk and listening to the full sounds that we hear on our walk. Or we could put the phone down on the train and just look around. You know, every single thing we do is either a practice to be mindful or a practice to be mindless. What are we practicing? When we brush our teeth and we're not present, when we get dressed, but we're, we're just robotic, we are training ourselves to be mindless and not present and not focused. And we can simply feel what we're feeling in our hands. We can smell what we're smelling. We can observe the sounds and sights around us with curiosity and wonder. And by doing this, we are training our minds to be in that childlike, wondrous state, but with wisdom that we have gained from experience. Very important. <laughs>
and interacting with that physical world. We're constantly reinforcing that focus. And so just simply allowing some spaciousness in our lives, closing our eyes, watching a sunset or the stars where we are literally looking out to infinity and tapping that spaciousness. We can begin to realize there is something between the false perception of separateness. And it's, it's really easy. And once you know it's there, then you're always in touch with it. And you can be in the most chaotic situations or the slowest traffic, loudest horns, <laughs> and you can still realize that there is that silence that allows those corn, car horns to be heard. And there is that space that allows for that traffic. And in simply expanding our perspective to the objects and the space, to the energy and the particles that make up our physical world, then we bring peace into the chaos. And if there was no silence, we would just be hearing all the noises at once and we wouldn't be able to hear anything. And if there was no space, there would be no room to walk around, <laughs> no place for the variety of forms to arise. And these are interconnected and there is no barrier just because we, we are not microscopic creatures able to see microscopic nuances and subtleties, but we know that every object is mostly empty space and is pure radiating energy out of every atom inside of it. And so we don't need to limit our perspective. We don't need to only believe in what we can see because we know there's so much more. And it's not delusion to broaden our perspective. In fact, it's where all wisdom arises. But how was it like when you sold all your belongings? And how did it feel after that when you accepted minimalism mm -hmm. and your lifestyle? When I was moving uh, out of my apartment in New York and I had a one-way ticket to India, I basically gave away everything I owned. I sold a couple things I could, but everything was just given to whoever wanted it. Uh, it was very freeing to not be tied down to an apartment or any stuff or even a storage lock. To have no monthly bills <laughs> and to just be completely free. Because the more things we have, the more things we're worried about losing. And some people think that I work for the World Economic Forum and I want them to own nothing and be happy because I say stuff like this, but I don't want them to own nothing. What I really want is for them to realize that happiness doesn't come from the own. And if you want tons of stuff, I want that for you. I just want you to remember that that is not going to bring lasting joy. It will only bring you the stuff. <laughs> so, and, and I also want people to remember who maybe don't have everything they want or even enough and they're anxious about money to remember that they can be happy now. They can work towards a goal, but they can be happy.
Hello. How are you? So when I gave away all my belongings, I could have put it in a storage locker, but I think that on some level, I knew that I wanted that freedom from just no bills, no places, no things, just no baggage. And I don't think I realized at the time, but at some point along my journey, I noticed that you really can help unclutter your mind by uncluttering your things, your belongings. You can create a peacefulness in your mind when there is a, a spaciousness surrounding you, both physically and in your mind, when we create that space where it's not fixated, focused, and obsessing. And we just allow everything to be. And it, and it doesn't have to be minimalism. It doesn't have to be getting rid of all your things. But if you're called to that, if you feel that there's some inner disturbance from all your possessions, from that insatiable quest to accumulate more, and you feel drawn towards experimenting with minimalism or even just ceasing the relentless pursuit of more <laughs> and just only consuming what you need that simplifies our lives and that simplicity creates a deep peace in our mind there is a there is a connection what did you mean when you said that and death is a great equalizer. Well, rich or poor, good or bad, our physical bodies will end up in the same place. And so death is the great equalizer because no matter how hard you fight it <laughs> or how, because of some circumstance, you get there too soon, we'll all get there. And in the cosmic time scale, it's less than the blink of an eye. And so we put so much weight on our shoulders about having the perfect life and making each moment amazing. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this time is fleeting. Our insignificance is significant and we can Instead, just allow for whatever the universe brings our way, and we don't have to be perfect, and we don't have to make everyone happy around us, and we, we can just allow for whatever happens to happen. And it doesn't mean passive. It actually means creating without attachment to the outcomes. And I think that that is really the most important thing because we're on a journey. The universe is on a journey. And it doesn't matter where we're going. We're all going to the exact same destination. And the question is, did we treat it like a journey? Did we explore? Were we curious? Or were we fearful, scared? clinging to temporary circumstances or possessions or were we free inside our heart and mind? Did the things we have possess us or could we possess them and lose them with equanimity and whether things are coming or going, can we have that inner peace that is available to all of us in every moment? And I think that so often when we live a life chasing 
possessions or success or fame or whatever it is. It's only important that we enjoy the journey because the outcome is us and the bird. <laughs> For me, when I was getting rid of all my possessions and I bought a one-way ticket to India, I don't think I consciously realized it at the time, but on some level, I noticed that our jobs can be like chains and our apartments are, can be like prisons and our possessions can be like this baggage that's just weighing us down. And all of that can lead to a life and a mindset that is not free. And because of this spiritual journey, because I was trying to free my mind and to completely put my trust in the universe, and to just follow my heart and not my head like my shaman told me. I just did what felt right and maybe on paper and maybe logically and maybe rationally I should have gotten a storage locker but uh, it felt very right in the moment to just shed every piece of property and possession I had and to fully embrace this lifestyle where I would not focus or fixate on material things and I would really tap into that spiritual dimension. So that was really the driving force, whether I was aware of it or not at the time. And it was the greatest decision I ever made, specifically because that one year trip turned into nine years. <laughs> so that would be an expensive storage locker, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> <laughs>